Hi, this is Anthony Parent of Parent Parent and Win LLP, the IRS medic. In this video, I'm going to try to see if I can help clarify the IRS delinquent FBAR filing requirements. And the first thing is, for some people, it's really simple. If you have an, a financial account where you never filed an FBAR form, but you had no unreported income, uh, these procedures are pretty straightforward. But something that we found out over the years is that there are so many people that sort of fall into a no man's land that yes, in the past three years, they have no unreported income, but in the last six years, they do. So what about people like that? Well, we're gonna to try to get to the bottom of that. And specifically, we're gonna talk about people who live overseas. And I'm gonna give it an example of uh, a hypothetical of someone who lives in Costa Rica. So let's go into, I have a blog up here, so I'm gonna go into some of this here. Um, that I've come to, this is where I've copied and pasted the uh, IRS delinquent FBAR submission procedures from the IRS.gov. And our first note is that we look here to um, taxpayers who do not need to use either the OVDP or the streamlined filings, I'm sorry about that, filings procedures to file delinquent, delinquent or amended tax returns to pay additional tax, but who have not filed an FBAR or a non of exam should simply file down here, delinquent FBARs according to the FBAR instructions, follow these instructions, okay? So that seems pretty straightforward that, well, geez, if you do have unreported income in say four years ago, um, but not in the past three years, you could make, um, just file delinquent FBARs and be done with it. But then as we go down, um, and this again from the irs.gov, says this, the IRS will not impose a penalty for the failure to file delinquent FBARs if you properly, I'm reading right here, reported your on your US returns and pay tax on the income from the foreign financial accounts reported on the delinquent FBARs, and you have not previously been contacted regarding income tax examination. So here's the issue, okay, is that you, the issue is that if you file a streamlined, you don't have any amended returns, but you do have six years of FBARs. And so here's the example that I want to give. Okay, and this is uh, in 2009. Here's a hypothetical. We have an Eric, and he's a US ex expatriate, and he's living in Costa Rica. And finally, a real estate deal he was waiting for comes through. His part of the deal got him uh, 400 million uh, colons, and Eric had some back child support in the US and other bills hanging over his head. Um, so while he was sort of waiting for, uh, trying to figure out who to get paid and get releases, he had the money sitting in an account in Costa Rica, and it earned some interest uh, um, that was about $1,200 USD. And in 2009, he didn't know that he needed to report that income, nor did he file an FBAR for it. So what he wants to know is, can he just file his missing FBARs and be done with it? Because in the last three years, he has been fully compliant, um, that he had no FBAR filing requirement, and that his taxes all properly reported his, his income. So I hope you can see the issue that we have here, because the, and the answer isn't quite so simple, because again, according to sentence one above, if Eric uses a streamlined offshore, foreign offshore voluntary disclosure, um, assuming he qualifies, he only has to amend returns for the last three years. There are no changes to make, there are no taxes due, there can't be an amended return to file. So doesn't he satisfy this first sentence? Couldn't he avoid the streamlined OVDP simply because he has no additional tax to report or pay in the last three years? To us, we'd say, yes, you should be able to file delinquent FBARs according to these procedures for the last three years and be done with the offshore issue. But then we get to the issue is the sentence I denote is two above. It states the IRS will not impose a penalty for any delinquent FBARs as long as there's no unreported income. Well, here's the big difference, okay? The streamlined OVDP looks back three years for tax returns, but it looks back six years for FBARs. So while there is no unreported income in the last three years, there is unreported income in the last six years for which an FBAR should have been filed. So what's an expatriate supposed to do? 
Well, adding to the confusion is that on October 9th, the IRS issued streamlined domestic OBDP FAQs. And that seems to support the position that one would have to go through a streamlined OBDP if they have unreported income in the uh, three years prior to the immediate three years and have that subjected to 5% penalty. However, in this case, Eric is a foreign streamlined OBDP to which these domestic FAQs do not apply, but rather a foreign streamlined F OBDP FAQ, but those are only one thing and it discusses right here the discussion of residency requirements. So there's nothing really about it. So now, what do we see? What are Eric's options? Well, he could file delinquent F bars only per, per the procedure above. The issue is that there does not appear to be a guarantee that the IRS could not later assess an F bar penalty for 2009. <clears throat> or he could potentially enter into a foreign streamlined offshore program. Okay, in that case, he would submit no amended returns, right? There's nothing to amend. Just those delinquent F bars with the rest of the OVDP submission. Now, there's not much of a downside to this I can think of because while he does technically have a penalty base for that 2009, the penalty rate, because his OVDP is a four-inch streamlined, is 0%. So this is a little bit different. It would be a sort of a harder answer to a harder question to answer if this was domestic. But so in Eric's case, it might make more sense to go into a foreign streamlined OVDP. I mean, as you can see, this is really complicated. And the IRS has attempted to answer these questions. And by the way, IRS is changing the rules all the time, so you kind of have to anticipate this. And this would be one where I would expect some clarification that two would be the right answer. That's what we're going to anticipate, that the IRS does want that to, to apply, that you actually would have to go into an OVDI instead of doing FBARs only if there's unreported income. Um, also, there is one more option. If Eric is uh, worried about, um, if Eric is worried about his unreported counts, maybe some criminal charges or worse things happening, uh, he can go into a full standard OVDP and opt out if he feels necessary. Now, hopefully, I helped clarify something. You might still be confused, and if you are, I'm going to put some links to our OVDP webinar, and that's about 50 minutes. And I'll be going over the entire, I go over the entire history of the offshore voluntary disclosure to give you a basis of what I'm talking about. I also uh, have a FBAR penalty webinar, and that runs, I think, about 25 minutes. Um, and I have some links for there, and there's no sign-up required. You just watch that on demand. Um, so that will hopefully help you out. This is Anthony Parent of Parent Parent and Win LLP, the IRS medic. I thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, you can call our offshore hotline at 888 477-4258. Thanks for watching.